Yeah, I'm actually quite surprised. The fact that COVID was able to mutate and evolve so quickly to the point where it could already counter our vaccine is pretty impressive. Also, the fact that we made a vaccine in about a year and a half span, which is pretty fast for, for a vaccine. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just shocked. Hi, my name is Sanjana. Hi, my name is Brendan, and this is Earth Listening. Okay, so for this week, we're going to be talking about the mask mandate and how it's drastically impacted California, especially shops, cities, events, and how things have changed and how our community and like other surrounding communities have reacted to it. So what is something you noticed, Brandon, about like our community reacting to the mask mandate being lifted? For us, I definitely see more of a change when it comes to like restaurants, when it comes to public places. You can see that a lot of people are coming back to, there's indoor dining, you have you know, libraries opening up. Although definitely the masks are still on, people can you know go back to enjoying those type of activities. Yeah, definitely, I agree. Like when I was passing by a restaurant and I noticed that none of the employees were wearing masks anymore. And then I um, like checked online and on June 17th, the mask mandate for workers was also lifted. So it's like, wow, we're going back to normal. But even through that, some groups of like events and things like that are hosting ways for employees to still wear masks and still push it. With the mask mandate, there is a lot of question about if people are lying about getting vaccinated or not. Because with everything going around, like people could easily be vaccinated, but you could never truly know. Because there's so many ways to fake a vaccination card. This mm-hmm. is just a piece of paper. You can make a photocopy and then white out somebody's name and like put their name on it. Like it's not too difficult. So like it's something we do like when we lose like a piece of paper that's important for school and it has like writing on it or like their name on it. Like when we were in elementary school, like you'd forget your homework or you'd lose this piece of paper. Like that's how like you can just photocopy it. It's really simple. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of like a big question. Yeah, for me, I've definitely seen that on the news. I see a lot of people, they actually go on and they sell their own, I guess, copies of vaccination cards. And for me, that that's just really difficult because I don't think there's a specific way to verify whether or not it's true or not. So you kind of have to just trust whether or not people will do it. True, but like, I feel like with our community, I have a little bit more trust just because when the mask mandate went on, we didn't have any situations where people weren't like not wearing masks from what I could see. So I feel like we're, we're pretty okay. But then recently I went to San Diego and it was like, mm-hmm. not the complete opposite, but it was kind of like half and half. And before like they even put up the signs that masks were not needed, people were not even using them, so. Yeah, I completely agree. I think where we are in Surdos, people are definitely more careful and people will be wearing their masks, but. I guess in just general, it's very important to know that whether or not people are vaccinated or not, you can't always trust that. Very true. It's like a kind of a bit iffy with everything, especially with the workers not having to wear their masks. It kind of switches up what's going on. Like it, you can never truly know if a worker is also vaccinated. So it kind of makes the situation a little bit different. Completely agree. So even more with this vaccination, I still feel like there's just as many people still wearing masks, even if they're vaccinated. Like I'm vaccinated, I'm still wearing my mask. Like it doesn't matter to me that it's been lifted, especially with the new variant coming out. Yeah, I feel exactly the same way. For me, when I leave the house, I always have my mask on just to be safe. I still try to be as careful as I can because I know if you happen to get it, then you know, you're gonna be home for a while, you won't be able to do anything. So just playing it safe. Yeah, definitely. And then to build up on that, even with being vaccinated, the Delta variant doesn't even hold up as much. So that just makes me more more worried that we're just going to go back to like phase number like 100 of COVID. Mm-hmm. So like might as well just, now that we know what to do, we can prevent it. Yeah, I'm actually quite surprised. The fact that COVID was able to mutate and evolve so quickly to the point where it could already counter our vaccine is pretty impressive. Also, the fact that we made a vaccine in about a year and a half span, which is pretty fast for for a vaccine. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm just shocked. Yeah, I I agree. But like, at the same time, it's not a good thing that (laughs) there's a new thing. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, but like, it's it's so like fascinating that it spread so quickly and like there's already a new um, mutation of it. So, 
yeah, that's the, that's one of the main reasons like other countries now are suffering from COVID because of this new variant and like how it's not functioning well with the vaccine. So that's really putting like a bunch of question marks about the mask mandate because I was listening to the radio and they were saying that it, you should still wear, it's recommended that you still wear your mask against the new Delta variant. And I was like, oh, so we're, we're, we're going back to the beginning now. I was thinking the exact same thing. You know, all the restaurants that literally just reopened I wonder if they're gonna have to go through the same thing again. They're gonna have to start checking people's temperatures. They're gonna have outdoor seating again, or maybe not even outdoor seating at all, considering how fast and how, you know, how much the new variant is growing. Definitely, yeah. It's going up really, really fast. Like, we're like going through like a second big cycle, kind of. We're like, I feel like the whole like Dutch variant, like, oh, you should wear a mask if you're sick. Like, it's exactly how it was in the beginning for COVID. So it's kind of bringing like awareness to like, wow, we might be going through another trial of this whole thing. And it's like, oh no, I, I can't deal with this anymore. So with um, July 4th coming up, you know, fireworks and these like carnivals and these things are like going to be big. A lot of people are going to want to get out, want to go to beaches, want to spend time outside. How do you think, you know, people are going to take this mask mandate? Are people going to not wear their masks when they go see these things? Like how is our community and other communities going to react? I feel like Surudos will definitely take some precautionary measures, considering that we were able to lock down pretty quickly, you know, the ABC school district and a lot of the public buildings. I feel like they might either have a specific capacity for the uh, July 4th celebration this year, or they might not have it at all. But then again, I don't know how exactly it looks for our city in particular with the variant because from what I remember, it's mainly in the South at the moment. So I think I'd, I'd say I'm half half on the situation where I feel like they could do capacity, but they could also hold the event itself. Yeah, so I, like I was searching up online how July 4th is going to be going on this year. And basically, there's going to be no boots, no like rides. It's just like looking at fireworks. It starts at 5 p.m. There's going to be a ceremony, literally just social distancing and just standing. And it's just like, oh, OK, that like that's a good way to go about it. But then there's no like picking, pick picking. So you can't sit on the ground. You have to like, I don't know how this is going to really go, but it's very like limited this year and that's a good way to like how our community is reacting to COVID so that we can still enjoy like some good fireworks and spend like utilize the mask mandate being removed but like also follow precautions because we don't want to spread COVID or like a new variant of COVID. Yeah I completely agree I think that's definitely the easiest way for them to do it it seems pretty safe you know, fireworks aren't anything you, it's actually better the further away you are from them it, or at, at, a, at a specific point. But yeah, I feel like fireworks definitely could work. The only problem I really see going on is uh, various food vendors they usually have in the occasion. And, you know, the kind of, I guess, just crowd they get. So the city's definitely going to be losing a lot of money, in my opinion. Yeah, definitely. I agree. But one of my biggest concerns is like what is how are people going to just stay in there for four hours like the ceremony is not that long so how are they going to like keep people entertained because i feel like everybody like no, nobody comes there for the ceremony that's one of the sad things but everybody comes there for the fireworks so i feel like it's going to be like nobody there until like 8 30 8 45 and then at 9 p.m it's going to like be so like full capacity or like give them more you know yeah i completely agree it's going to like it's really unpredictable this year with how many people are gonna come. Like, I was talking to my parents about it in the beginning, they said, yeah, let's go. Like, we can go see the fireworks. And then 10 seconds later, after we discussed it, we decided not to, but then I'm going still for our thinking to continue the jewelry fundraiser to spread awareness about that. So, you know, it's like very difficult to estimate how many people are gonna come because they still wanna maintain social distancing protocols, but they can't like assume how many people are gonna come because that like social distancing and you have a certain amount of like square footage and it's a really big if a big question mark for sure yeah i feel like what they're doing is just smart in general doing that it kind of confuses me though the main part of i guess this new variant and how it works itself are we going to still maintain that six feet mandate or is it going to be maybe even more or is it going to be less you know I'm still not sure how that works, but I think once you figure that out, the city will definitely take the measures that are you know, important. Yeah, definitely, I agree. Like, it truly just depends on how our community reacts because 
if we were in a different community, I guarantee you there would be no more masks because Texas removed its mask mandate like months ago. We're like super last, but that that's because like, you know, there, everybody has to get vaccinated in our area. And like, there's so many vaccination sites that like, I'm surprised if somebody hasn't gotten vaccinated because there's so many ways you can. And you know, it's so accessible now. So I feel like everything is going to change a lot in the future, like the next few days, both like positively and negatively. So are you doing anything for the summer that's like been impacted by, you know, COVID, um, like mass mandate being lifted? Has like your personal life been in- impacted by it? What's the story? Yeah, for me, I'm taking uh, two college classes at the moment. So, you know, regularly during summer, I would actually be visiting those campuses and having class in person. So similar to how I've had school this past year and a half, we're just doing it online. It definitely has had an impact on the learning in the classroom setting. Uh, For me, I find it more enjoyable or I find it easier if it's online, but definitely I know there's people that require to be in a classroom or have a classroom setting where they can learn and not get distracted. Besides that, I think pretty much everything's the same besides eating. For me, I, I like to go get takeout, so I guess that doesn't necessarily matter. Yeah, for me, like, I went a long period of time without food from the, like, outside world, let's say. Like, I think I went, like, almost half a year, a little bit over because of, like, the coronavirus. And I was just, like, you know, I still wanted to, like, wait and see what was going on. But then, like, eventually I gave in. (laughs) And I did, like, have food from the outside world. And, like, now, like, it's just become a normal thing. And then as soon as, like, we go back in or we have, like, our second round, like, second big round, if that happens, it's gonna completely like go back the opposite way and I'm sure what's gonna go on for the future. Yeah, I agree. Okay, well, that's a little bit of a wrap on how our opinions are for the coronavirus, kind of like big portion of the mask mandate being lifted. We're been like, we're in a big iffy zone, but we also know like how our community is gonna react and a good generalization of how specific other communities are gonna react and how some communities are going to go completely maskless while others are just going to pretend like nothing has ever changed. So it's a good outlook or perspective on how other communities are, you know, surviving during this time. So thank you guys for listening. Thanks for listening. Check us out on Instagram at earthlinkingofficial. Check out our website on Instagram located in the link in our bio. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at earthlinkingteam. Donate to our GoFundMe located in the description box below. This is Earth Listening. See you in the next episode.